Alright guys, well, it is a lovely moonlit, starlit night here in the however many collapses we have had here and within a few miles of here in the Yucatan Peninsula in the heart of the Mayan Empire here in Buena Vista, Mexico where I am spending my fourth and final night here in my four foot by six foot <coughs> little cubicle uh, as I navigate the uh, rest of my life but anyway it is a lovely it is a Monday night it is February 27th 2023 as I wind down my time here on this Mexican vacation mm -hmm. and today we are not going to medium.com uh, where I, I guess I am now a published writer at medium.com. I don't think the audience here at Collapse Chronicles is quite ready to go over there, but you can find uh, <laughs> I have published my first article at medium.com. So I've had enough of medium.com for today. But we're going to go right here on the mainstream media today in Yahoo News. This is from an outfit calling itself Canary Media, as in, you know, Canary and the Coal Mine Media, but it was originally published uh, recently in the Revelator, um, which I have had rants from before. And this is a long uh, article, long in-depth article. I'm only going to read the first half of it. If you want to find out more and if you want to get into the hopium, you can go to this, go on the link and read the second half. But we're just going to, for any of, any of you still, conf, still, uh, is the word confused or the word uh, dreaming that um, we're going to have a seamless transition from the frying pan of fossil fuels to, I mean, I'm sorry, from the fire of fossil fuels to the frying pan of renewable energy, it is finally making its way into the mainstream media, the bright green lies. So this is how the mainstream media is spinning the bright green lies and good for them. And uh, Canary Media, or The Revelator, is asking a question. How can we get enough minerals for electric vehicles without trashing the planet? Well, the short answer is we can't. Okay, there is no way to get enough minerals for electric vehicles without trashing the planet. The, uh, the whatever you want to call this thing, the, this jump from the frying pan to the fire, going from gasoline powered vehicles to electric vehicles, if anything is going to trash the planet more than the gas-sucking cars we have on the road today. And we're going to let Tim Leiden explain this to us. As I say, this is the first half. Take it away, Tim. <clears throat> Manufacturers, governments, and consumers, well, some consumers, are lining up behind electric vehicles, with U.S. sales rising 60% in 2022, and at least 17 states considering a California-style ban on gasoline cars in the years ahead. Scientists, scientists say the trend 
is a key part of driving down the transportation sector's carbon emissions, which could fall by as much as 80% by 2050 mm -hmm, under aggressive policies. But while EVs are cleaner than gas cars in the long run, you know, when you measure the tailpipe, basically when you're looking at the anus of a, these, if you're comparing the anus of a gasoline powered car to an electric vehicle, the EV is going to have a cleaner anus than the gas powered car. Okay, I'm not arguing the cleanliness of the anus of one of these. Looking at every other part of the electric vehicle other than the anus, uh, well, do your own math. Okay. While EVs are cleaner than gas cars in the long run, they still carry environmental and human rights baggage, especially associated with mining. This is Ian Lang, director of the Mineral and Energy Economics Program at the Colorado School of Mines. And guys, while I'm mentioning the Colorado School of Mines, do you realize that Derek Jensen is a graduate of the Colorado School of Mines. I have never asked Derek, well Derek's no longer speaking to me of course, but when Derek was uh, still speaking to me, I do wish I had asked him, what the hell were you doing going to the, Calif to the Colorado School of Mines? But anyway, uh, that has nothing to do with this rant, I don't think. All right said Ian Lang, quote, if you want a lot of EVs, you need to get minerals out of the ground. Hmm. Close quote. I thought minerals grew on trees. Don't minerals grow on trees? Or I, I think they're up there on the moon and the asteroids. You don't need to get them out of the ground. You can scrape them up off the bottom of the ocean. You can go mine them off the moon. You can go mine them off of asteroids. So already the mainstream media is lying. You don't need to get them out of the ground. Anyway, they're lying there on the bottom of the ocean. Okay, but assuming that you do need to get these things out of the ground, that is because manufacturing EVs requires about six times more minerals than traditional, can you say, gas sucking cars. That requirement, coupled with growth in consumer electronics, consumer electronics and renewable energy infrastructure will double global mineral demand over the next two decades, according to the International Energy Agency, and that is only under current trends. The IEA says meeting the Paris Climate Accord goals for decarbonization will require even more, far more minerals, as much as four to six times present amounts and I have actually heard you know the act you know the mining uh, planet eater miners uh, saying themselves that between now and 2050 that the clean green planet saving energy transition will require 10 times the amount of mining, literally eating the planet. Ten 
times as much of this planet will have to be eaten to save the planet from fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. Whatever the real number turns out to be, that will mean a lot of mining, mm -hmm. with much of it for electric vehicle batteries. And at least some of it will happen in the United States as the planet-saving Joe Biden administration and many Republicans want more EV materials sourced at home, both to act on climate change and to wrest some control of supply chains from China. And this is why I have had several rants, you know, stating the obvious conclusion that uh, if you think you have seen an attack on our public lands by the oil and gas industry, okay, you can take everything the oil and gas industry and the goddamn frackers and the rest of the bunch of those evil SOBs and multiply it by about sixfold. And this is what we are talking about with direct assaults on our public lands as, uh, you know, Joe Biden and the little greenies like AOC and uh, probably Bernie Sanders and that usual gang of little lefties are, are going to cheer on this, uh, in, in, you know, following this corporate greenwashing crap. It's unbelievable crap, people. Every bit of this is, is, is a bunch of bright green lies and let the graduate of the Colorado Mining School, uh, Derek Jensen, explain it to you. Okay? It, it, it's the biggest goddamn pack of lies being rammed down our throats, I, I guess, since fossil fuels cranked up a couple hundred years ago. Anyway, back to Dr. Lang from Derek Jensen's alma mater. Lang, who served as an economic advisor in the Trump administration, says it will be a big change for the country, which, quote, got out of the minerals game, close quote, in recent decades, and it will bring challenges including obtaining permits for minerals development. Well, they're going to be being handed out like candy at a Mardi Gras parade. Uh, yeah, uh, don't worry. You will have no problem obtaining permits for minerals development, developing the needed workforce, and building out processing capacity. The Biden administration hopes funding from the landmark Inflation Reduction Act, otherwise known as the Bright Green Lie Attack on the Planet Act, and other sources will help overcome these obstacles. Mm -hmm. But the rush for renewables will also bring another big hurdle, environmental impacts. Already, as the search for EV materials ramps up, tribes, landowners, and communities find themselves wrestling with the not-so-green side of green energy. For a sense of things, Consider cobalt. About 30 pounds of it go into every EV battery to boost performance and energy storage, which are key to luring consumers from dirtier gasoline cars. But today, 70% of cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where an estimated 40,000 children as young as six years old 
work in dangerous mines. The mines also bring deforestation, uh, shall we, yeah, habitat fragmentation, otherwise known as obliterating, obliterating huge swaths of rainforest off the face of the planet, habitat fragmentation, and high carbon emissions from mining and refinery processes that rely heavily on fossil fuels to produce their electricity and drive heavy machinery. Some sources say cobalt mining's CO2 emissions could in fact double by 2030. And then they have links to all of this. If you go on this link, you will find all these other links. EV boosters are eager to put mileage between their products and human rights abuses, which fuel Republican and oil industry criticisms of battery power. Although efforts are underway to improve overseas practices, another way to tackle the issue would be to mine cobalt in the United States. Can you say a direct assault on our public lands, which would also increase domestic sources of EV materials, but today our country, I guess, is the one they're talking about, has only one cobalt mine, and building others would likely raise environmental concerns. Lang says that is certainly the case in Alaska, where copper and cobalt rest beneath rolling tundra in the Ambler district south of the Brooks Range, accessing these cobalt reserves would require a 200-mile road through traditional Alaska native lands. I'm not going to get off on a rant. There is no such thing as an Alaska native. Anyway, well, there are some Alaska natives, such as caribou, would require a 200-mile road through caribou habitat and the gates of the Arctic National Park with gravel quarries dug every 10 miles. That is something state leaders support, but state and natural environmental groups in several, quote, indigenous communities oppose. Permitting for the road began during the Obama administration and was approved under Donald Trump, but is now under reconsideration by Biden. We shall see. According to Lang, such regulatory sagas breed uncertainty within the minerals industry that slows investment in the minerals needed for EV batteries. He offers up the Twin Metals Mine near Minnesota's Boundary Water Wilderness as another example. Here the target is nickel, another important EV metal mined in only one U.S. location. In a political tug of war, the mine's long-held leases were denied renewal by Obama, reinstated under Trump, and then canceled under Biden. And, and all kidding aside, good for Joe Biden for canceling that planet eating direct threat to the Boundary Waters canoe uh, area. You know, as I say, Joe Biden is going to throw the little greenies some bones. Uh, and, and, and all joking aside, good for Joe Biden for having the balls to do that. Uh, you know, after Donald Trump just handed over the million acre 
uh, Boundary Waters canoe area to the uh, to the Planet Eaters. Anyway, in both cases, concerns over compliance with the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act, and the National Environmental Policy Act led to lawsuits and claims of rushed environmental analysis. Lang says these bedrock environmental laws have improved air quality and human health conditions in the United States, but at the same time, they may also contribute to the lag in sustainable production of EV materials. Okay, guys, before I go any farther with this bullshit, there is no such thing of sustainable production of EV materials. By the very notion of the term sustainable production of EV materials is unadulterated horseshit. It is a bright green lie. Uh, it, it is a myth. Uh, and anybody believing that there is such a thing as sustainable production of EV materials is a clueless moron. Okay, now that we've straightened that out, what does this little planet eater, Dr. Lang, have to say? Quote, when we restrict access to natural resources, these international companies can choose to go elsewhere, close quote, he says, often to countries with lax environmental and human rights laws. And he's absolutely correct about that. Uh, the tension between environmental protection and renewables development. How about that for an oxymoron? Renewables development uh -huh, is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Adam Bronstein of Western Watersheds Projects sees it in northern Nevada where his group has joined a lawsuit against a proposed open pit lithium mine in Thacker Pass, an area of remote desert that is home to sage grouse, pronghorn antelope, Lahontan cutthroat trout, and other sensitive species, including some only some only found locally. It also holds hundreds of the uh, incorrectly named Native American heritage sites that remain in, important to tribes today. He says, quote, It is a very remote and undeveloped landscape where the stars are still bright and the air is quiet. Yes. Bronstein says the West is quickly losing such landscapes to development including large-scale solar projects and renewable energy mining. At Thacker Pass, for instance, the lithium mine would entail a two-mile-long open pit with waste ore, acid dumps, and massive water usage like opponents of Alaska's Ambler Road, some also worry about open access to additional claims spreading impacts to further wild lands. Mine proponents say Thacker Pass Lithium could support more than a million electric vehicles annually and would add jobs and tax revenue. Hmm. Bronstein questions the notion that ecologically valuable areas must be sacrificed for climate goals. Others agree, including a rising chorus who say solar and wind development in Nevada and California are eliminating 
vast areas of wildlife habitat contributing to biodiversity loss worldwide as a judge considers the Thacker Pass lawsuit nearly 2,000 miles away, residents of Coosa County, Alabama express similar concerns over plans to mine graphite. Yet another electric vehicle mineral not currently produced in the United States. Quote, it's gonna be a mess. Mm. It's going to be a mess, says Chris D. D. Giorgio, a lifetime resident of the area and a board member of the Coosa River Keeper, which protects, promotes, and restores the Coosa River. D. Giorgio says graphite mining will level forest, disrupt hydrology, and leave chemical pollution that could last generations. Sounds pretty sustainable to me. Yet, he also acknowledges the need for minerals to support renewable energy. Quote, we all want to stop climate change, he says. Still, he feels that Alabama state officials unjustifiably fast-tracked the mine's permits, and he questions whether graphite demand will still be high by the time mining starts in 2028. My guess that'll be about five times as the demand as it is now. But whereas Western Watersheds Project is fighting the Thacker Pass Mine, Coosa Waterkeeper appears settled into guarded acceptance and a commitment to playing a watchdog role over the mine. And this goes on and on and on. Uh, let's get to the last chapter and you can go on the link to read the rest. Scientist, activist, and this is the last paragraph. Scientists, activists, and other experts have spent decades advocating for this change, even as the dangers of burning fossil fuels have increased. The future has finally started to arrive, but... As Bronstein reminds us, making the transition to cleaner fuels still requires careful planning and restraint. Hmm. And restraint to protect our already beleaguered biodiversity and other natural resources. Oh, Jesus. There you go. Is there anything in that story that was ambiguous or unclear to anybody on the planet that does not yet understand that we have two choices in the energy revolution? The frying pan that we are in that is going to kill us all, or the fire we're going to jump into that is going to kill us all. We are doomed. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up and go have my final margarita in Buena Vista, Mexico. While I still can. My guys.